speaker is Moti Crystal. Moti is the CEO of Nest Negotiation Strategies and a global consulting firm which provides complex negotiation and crisis management services to senior officials and executives. From 1994 to 2001, he served in crucial positions in Israeli peace negotiation teams, and through his professional experience, he gained extensive uh, research in complex crisis management, which has since, been, since then been used in business and governmental crises, including cybersecurity. Monte Cristo graduated Harvard Kennedy School and Barnard University Law School. He publishes articles and commentaries in the media, as well as teaches in various academic institutions, including Skolovo, which is Russia's leading business school. Hello, so good evening. Skolko, Pauline, Skolko. I'm a negotiator, I work a lot in uh, Russia as well. And some people ask me, are you going to work with Russians in negotiations? Because you know the typical Russian negotiation technique. There is a man, there is a problem. No man, no problem. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm laughing. <laughs> and, one, and one of the uh, and, and one of the always asked question. It doesn't matter if I speak for an hour or for five days in Russia. The most common question is, uh, Can you now tell us one of your negotiation mistakes? <laughs> And, you know, I, I, uh, I put this uh, beautiful picture. <laughs> you know, I was part of the Israeli negotiation to uh, negotiation team to Camp David, so uh, is this a big enough fuck up to show with you? <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar, the non-Israelis with this uh, uh, beautiful scene. But uh, we were sitting outside watching this in the uh, back office. <laughs> you think it's funny, huh? <laughs> you think it's funny, okay? So, uh, thank you. Uh, uh... No, it's okay. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it was good. Kalas, kalas. You think it's funny? I, well, I, I didn't think it was funny because I was sitting there and said, like, shit, we can say shit and we'll fuck up my like, Shit, we can wrap up everything and travel back to Tel Aviv. And my, my colleagues in the team said, no, why? Why are you spoiling the party? We are going to reach an agreement. And I said, with a lot of criticism about Ehud Barak's negotiation behavior, while really appreciating him for his courage, I said, a leader that pushed back, an Arab leader, <laughs> is someone who doesn't necessarily understand the mindset in this region. Because this is something that it is not done. Definitely not in front of the cameras. But I don't want to talk with you about the negotiation failures. Uh, because we can, you know, we can spend nights um, on, on various negotiation phases. I want to focus on one particular point, which I call mind the gap. Mind the gap between you as a negotiator and whoever is behind. It could be your co-founder, it could be your manager, it could be your client. Because many times you are negotiating on behalf of others. And this is something which I can say, as you will, uh, as you will hear, was one of my uh, most uh, significant uh, uh, failures working with, with, uh, with my uh, uh, business clients. Since we are all now on record, I will say just one thing about the negotiation to release Gilad Shadid that I, I, was, uh, I had the, the honor to take part in some uh, two and a half years uh, of them. We had or we presented a deal 
to release Gilad Shalit almost a year and a half before he was released. The deal, December 2009. Gilad Shalit, for, Gilad Shalit is an Israeli uh, soldier who was captured by uh, Hamas in uh, June 2006. He was released uh, October 2011. And in December 2009, there was a deal which was not approved by uh, either the Israeli government or Hamas. If you ask me in retrospective, what was the reason? The reason is that we didn't pay attention as negotiator to tailor the gap between the decision maker and the negotiator, which means that the decision maker, both on the Israeli side and on Hamas side, the decision makers Netanyahu and Mashad didn't see the same picture as the negotiators and the mediators have seen. And that gap brought a no on their uh, 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 behalf. This is a guy, let's call him uh, Bo. Okay? <laughs> Bo. This is a guy, not enough time to put it on camera, okay? <laughs> this is a guy who is a white hat hacker. You know what is a white hat hacker? White hat hackers are people who hack... Uh, no, 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 I... Everything under control. So far. Uh, uh, white hacks are people who hack for good reasons. I mean, they believe that it's for good reasons. This guy in 2000, Bob, in 2012, hacked a huge company and... Uh, 2004, he hacked Microsoft. 2008, it was another big company. And 2012, he got a company that actually called me to assist in managing the negotiation with this guy. This guy said, in three months, I'm going to publish, in a big conference, I'm going to publish the source code of your hardware, not even the software. OK? Bad story, he did. We failed. And why we failed? We failed because the CEO of the company that, that, was, uh, uh, that was hacked decided to put on the negotiation team the head of IT. <laughs> the head of IT. You know, the person whose ass is on the grill cannot be the negotiator. And the one who supports him cannot be the legal advisor. Okay? And I saw it. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> it's just an open statement. Uh, let's start negotiating. So he put it, the, uh, uh, we couldn't, I couldn't convince the CEO, I couldn't convince the VP security who was on my side to force the CEO to change the negotiation team. And the guy published the information, estimated damage of 250 million US dollars to the ecosystem. This is just because in three months, we worked in parallel on other engineering track, because estimated damage at the beginning of the process was 1.2 billion. So it was a good work, but a huge negotiation failure. This taught me a lesson when I cannot fully close the gap, I might very gently ask the decision maker or the person in charge, would you allow me, please, to do the, uh, uh, the, the negotiation? And in 2015, this is a text message that the CEO of a relatively big financial company gets. This was a small tip of iceberg. Hopefully those proofs are sufficient so far. It was snapshot, screenshots, of the data that was hacked by this uh, uh, group of Russian uh, cyber criminals. Our demand is a single non-negotiable payment of 500 bitcoins without any further sanctions from our side. So far, we only extracted data without damaging or trading it. This could be either real-world penetration testing or an event that will damage your brand in an irre irreversible way. Just think what a leak of, that, of all that on the relevant that's the name of the industry, forum, or an article on the professional journal on other place could do. Next conference could be very embarrassing. We don't want you to end like Ashley Madison CEO. <laughs> this is not, and then the guy says, this is not a personal matter, it's a smile, okay? 
and the CEO, I'm an Israeli, I will not be extorted, huh? <laughs> I can't end up like him, but I like the example. <laughs> I read this, I said, I will not repeat the mistake that I did three years before with this ball. Now I will, yeah, now I will push myself uh, and I literally took over uh, 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 the negotiations. Uh, this is my text, you know, you start, I will not reveal all the information if you want. In two weeks I give uh, 20 minutes, they allow me 20 minutes at Wired UK conference about uh, uh, cyber extortion. How do we say in Russia, trust but verify? Uh, great point, I'm trying to bargain. I said, uh, you are also to trust me, I'm saying, when I said that I need a discount, <laughs> uh, 100 Bitcoin or so, something that will help me with my, you can imagine Israelis, I was not presenting myself as an Israeli, um, anything, be and then say, anything below 500 co bitcoins will be unacceptable. Uh, scroll up, please. This is why we always call it our demand. Uh, a demand, that's a lovely sentence. A demand is not a negotiation. Can you imagine? A demand is not a negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I, say, I understand the potential damage as you describe it. My IT, let alone board, need to feel that they got something. Okay, I'm using this gap in order to make him work with me. So we are both want to go and persuade the board to pay uh, something. This is not a traditional thing where you can do that and we are not the kind of people who need just some kind of money quickly. My friend, this is a huge information asset about who they are. And I have 170 screenshots and I run out of uh, 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 time. Uh, just the last, uh, uh, the last one, after two months of negotiations, um, because without that, uh, the, uh, he, he writes me, if you make everything on time, you definitely can claim yourself as one of the most influent people for that company in 2015, because without that, there might be no that company in the way it's operating now. To that, waiting for your updates. Thanks, appreciate that. I can guess that this time we can call it as a compliment. <laughs> this is fun. If you prefer to take it as a compliment, <laughs> and, 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 and this is where this is where I start slowly, slowly to fade out. Hello there. Hey, he writes me. You became harder to reach lately. <laughs> I know. I'm fading out. Yes, it is fading out. Leaving the stage for the techies. Um, what I want to say, you will never negotiate alone. No person negotiates alone. You will always negotiate on behalf or with people. Remember that I would say 60-70% of negotiation failures are rooted in this gap, in this lack of coordination within internal Members, where's the goal? <laughs> uh, internal or with uh, with the manager? We have time for questions. No. Yes. Yeah. Three questions. Three questions. Three questions. I have a question. I need to handle it. Wait. No. 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 No.